So, I just want to say a couple of things that actually Mary and I were talking about, because there was one, there was one piece of news she noticed, uh, which meant a lot, actually, to both of us, in different ways. Some of you in this room may have come across Peter Temple Morris, the late Peter Temple Morris, and I had the privilege of meeting him in Brussels. I think he played an invaluable role in a lot of discussions that we have been discussing today. And he was a passionate pro-European, that's how I met him when I was in Brussels. And he is what I would like to be, which is a one-nation, old-fashioned Tory, having worked for Sir Edward Heath. I'm proud of Heath. I'm proud of that generation of people who took us into the European Union. That's why I'm determined that we will continue to fight to stay in. But throughout these discussions, I've been thinking about those people, people who've shaped what we are risking destroying. There's also an old MEP who sadly died in the middle of the, just after the referendum campaign, Andrew Pearce, who if only some people in London had actually bothered to read the messages he wrote, like actually, as Olivier remembers this well, Olivier was my predecessor as chairman of the European Movement Most Site, Dr. Olivier Sykes from the University of Liverpool. But I, basically, if they bothered to read that, talk to the women's institutes, talk to the groups, don't just rely upon the social media. But we, as Professor Tung touched on, this was a division in the Conservative Party, uh, which was, I think, an energy secretary once said, we've got a problem with the United States, we'll share it with, the, with our friends. Well, the Conservative Party division was shared with the country. And that's the state we're in at the moment. I think we can reverse it. I personally, passionately believe that the Article 50 solution put forward by John Bruton is the one we can rotate and gravitate around. I'm going to abuse my right of closing by simply saying I would call it the reverse letter to Santa. I would say that we have to ask as a country... We have to ask the Father Christmas of the other EU27 for the extension. But wouldn't it be a lot easier? I'm not a parent, so I can't comment on children. But wouldn't it be a lot easier if perhaps sometimes we reverse that logic and the parents, Santa, actually hinted to the children what was possible? In other words, former Taoiseachs, former prime ministers, former leaders from the political families actually sending out the signal that rather than playing with fire, rather than shooting us over the hard Brexit cliff edge, why don't people read the text? And instead of talking transitions, talk about extension to Article 50. Because again, there's a lesson in the referendum we missed out on. UKIP and the hard right in the Conservative Party would have supported votes for 16 and 17 year olds. It's there, it's on the record. But we missed that trick, I think. Actually, the Labour Party and the Conservative Party, for equal different reasons, missed the trick. On this occasion, jo Jacob Rees Mogg an image of which we've been left with, Jacob Rees-Mogg has actually hinted or said that he does not want taxation without representation. Well, let's take him seriously on that. Let's ask him, right, that means extending Article 50, extending the runway, extending the road. We can all walk along it. We may just wish to achieve different um, end destinations. So I leave that with the thought that it is not all given up yet. I think there's still everything to fight for. And with meetings like this, and thank you to all the speakers who've traveled far and wide to come here. Thank you to everyone in the panel who stuck it out. And thank you in particular to the, the unnamed people behind the scenes. To Cozy, who's helped as well as reading us the text, but helped behind the scenes. To Mary, without whom none of you would have been here. And you're all on her black list now. Sorry. <laughs> That black book is getting bigger and bigger. I promised to buy a, a, a blank war and peace to fill with because we're determined to get every single pro-European we can up to Liverpool to speak because Liverpool can lead where London is lagging. Anyhow, enough of the promotion for that. Thanks also to Val, who's just walked in because she unfortunately had a sad occasion to attend earlier today, but I'm delighted she can join us for the drinks. Val is a member of the Athenaeum, and without Val's good offices and intervention with the President, Sir David, we wouldn't have got the use of this room. So thank you to Val. Thank you to Vipka at the back, who also helped greatly with our organizing this. And last but not least, thank you to Aidan, who has basically made sure that all your words will live on for posterity, <laughs> because they've been live screened on Facebook while you've been speaking. And I've been told that we don't need to edit out the bit about uh, possible ideas coming from conservative pro-Europeans and being handed to the Labour Party. That can stay in. So everything will be put up on YouTube. It'll all be available on Worldwide Wednesday, which is a monthly first Wednesday of every month. Networking we do in Liverpool to bring people together who are internationally minded. And that's at Avenue HQ. 
Um, but we've also set up a YouTube website. Please subscribe. If we can get over 100, then we can start actually advertising it more widely through Google. And uh, I just want to say thank you to Aidan because he's done the, all the work. I know nothing about any of this. And without his help, none of this would be possible. And we... <laughs> And Val's pointing at Mary and Agnes as well. And Agnes for the Irish Business Enterprise, which I did say at the beginning as well, but I'll conclude with and say at the end as well. Thank you also for your help and your invaluable support. So that's enough of all the thank yous. I think now it is to go and enjoy the other spectacular room in this club, which is downstairs, the bar. So, Schlonchevet. <laughs>